Okay, so welcome to Joint Princeton IAS number three seminar. Today we have Ron Zhou from Imperial College, London, uh, who is telling us independence of L for Frobenius congested classes attached to abelian varieties. Okay, um, so thanks very much for the introduction and for the invitation to speak. It's a pleasure to be back. Um, I hope everyone's doing well. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about um, a recent joint work with Mark Kisson on the independence of L for Frobenius congested classes. Uh, so this paper is currently in the preprinting stage and we'll have to hopefully have a preprint out very, very soon. Um, so I just want to start off by going over like the structure of the talk. Um, oops, sorry. So the talk will roughly be divided up into three parts. So in the first part of the talk, I'm just going to give uh, the statement of the main theorem. Um, which, as the title suggests, it's a, it's a theorem about uh, completely about abelian varieties. So hopefully this part of the talk will be pretty accessible. Um, and then I'm going to sort of dive straight in uh, to the proof of, of the main theorem. And the first thing we're going to need to do is actually I'm going to give a reinterpretation of the main theorem in terms of Shimura varieties. Um, so in fact, what we're going to do in the second part of the talk is to convert the problem into a problem about Shimura varieties. And then this actually allows us to sort of attack the problem using a variety of techniques. Okay, and then in the last part of the talk, I'll sort of give the idea of the proof. And this involves, I think, a few quite interesting ingredients such that, such as the existence of CM liftings on Shimura varieties. And it also uses things like uh, Lefort's theorem on the existence of compatible local systems on, on smooth curves. Okay, um, so let's move straight on into uh, the statement of the main theorem. So to, to get the statement, I need to introduce some basic notions about uh, abelian varieties. So the first thing I'll talk about is uh, mumford tate groups. So uh, I'll let A be uh, an abelian variety over the complex numbers. Then it's known that its Betty cohomology, uh, which I'll define to be V, is equipped with a Hodge structure of type zero minus one, minus one zero. And this, so this Hodge structure actually determines a homomorphism mu from the multiplicative group into GL of V tensor uh, C. And this, this homomorphism is usually called the Hodge co-character. And then we can define the mumford tate group GA of this complex abelian variety to be the smallest algebraic group GA, which is contained in GLV, defined over Q, actually contains the uh, the image of the uh, uh, the Hodgkin character, and another way to characterize it is is actually um, it's the uh, subgroup of GLV, which actually stabilizes all the Hodge cycles. Um, and it's known that actually this uh, the Smurfit Tate group is actually a reductive group, and uh, this just follows from the existence of polarizations. Um, so this uh, mumford tate group actually uh, encodes some pretty, uh, it's actually an important invariant of the abelian variety. It actually encodes some important information about it. So for example, if A is an elliptic curve, um, then this mumford tate group actually comes in essentially two types. So it's either going to be um, uh, this torus given by the restriction of scalars from K down to Q of the multiplicative group if A has uh, CM by um, some k uh, quadratic imaginary extension of the rational numbers, or it's just going to be equal to GL2 if A doesn't have CM. Okay. Um, so, so that was a brief introduction to mumford tate groups, but obviously as number theorists, we're really interested in the case when these abelian varieties are defined over some more interesting ground fields, such as uh, number fields. And the reason is, in these cases, they actually give rise to so-called Galois representation. So to explain this, let's uh, assume that uh, the Sibelian variety A is actually now defined over some number field uh, E. Then um, this, uh, 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 and I'll let E bar denote the algebraic closure of E. And I'll also fix L to be uh, some prime number. Then the Atal cohomology group, uh, of uh, the base change of E uh, of A to a, uh, E bar with QL coefficients is equipped with an action of the absolute Galois group of E. And we'll write rho L uh, to be the resulting representation into the Atal cohomology. OK, 
Okay, so this representation satisfies the following interesting property. So if you let, uh, if we let B dividing P not equal to L be a prime of E where A has good reduction, then the neuron og shafarevich criterion, or at least the one direction of it, which actually follows from smooth proper base change, implies that rho L is actually unramified at, at B. And so if we fix uh, a geometric Fabinius element at B from V, then the Vey conjectures implies that this characteristic polynomial of Frobenius acting on the et al cohomology, which a priori has coefficients in QL, actually has coefficients in Z and is independent of, of L, okay? So this, this sort of phenomenon of independence of L is what uh, the title of the talk actually refers to. And the main theorem uh, that we're, I'm gonna state is actually sort of a refinement of this independence statement. Okay, um, so now we've introduced these two sort of very nice structures on an abelian variety, this, uh, this muffet take group and these allotic representations. It turns out they actually interact in a, in a very nice way. Um, and this actually follows from um, Deline's theorem. So the Betty et al comparison isomorphism gives us an isomorphism between uh, V tensored with uh, QL, so the Betty cohomology tensored with QL and the et al cohomology with uh, QL coefficients. So we can actually consider this representation rho L as a representation of the absolute Gower group into GL of uh, V tensor QL. And Deline's theorem that Hodge cycles are absolutely Hodge implies that there exists, we can make some finite extension E prime such that if you restrict this representation to the subgroup corresponding to E prime, this actually factors through um, the Mumford take group. Okay, so this result is actually, I guess, uh, kind of surprising because if you think about it, the Mumford take group is something which only depends on the abelian variety over the complex numbers, whereas this Gower representation really encodes something about the arithmetic structure of this abelian variety over the number field. So the fact that these uh, two structures interact in this very nice way is, is, is a little surprising. Um, so I won't explain precisely why this actually follows from Deline's theorem, but I can give you a heuristic argument why one should believe this, this result. And the heuristic really comes from the Hodge conjecture. So if one believes the Hodge conjecture, this tells us that um, all Hodge cycles essentially come from algebraic cycles. And in fact, they will come from algebraic cycles defined over the algebraic closure of E. So if you take uh, finally many uh, algebraic cycles, which actually span the space of all Hodge cycles, um, then they'll actually be defined over some finite extension. And then if you uh, restrict the Gower group with this uh, finite extension, then all these algebraic cycles and hence all the Hodge cycles will be preserved by the Gower representation. Okay, so if you believe the Hodge conjecture, then this factoring property is something that you, know, you could believe would be true. And one can actually think of Deline's theorem as a reasonable substitute for the Hodge conjecture in the case of uh, abelian varieties. Okay, so that's, uh, I guess, a heuristic argument why you should believe this factoring property. So uh, just upon relabeling, we can write um, rho L superscript uh, GA to be the resulting representation into the Mumford take group. Okay, so, uh, in order to state the main theorem, I need to introduce one more piece of notation. So if G is a reductive group over a field of characteristic zero, I'll write uh, conj G uh, for the K variety of conj Z classes in G. Um, so in other words, this is just the quotient of G acting on itself uh, via conjugation. And I'll let chi denote the natural projection from G down to conj G. Then uh, if now V is a prime of good reduction as above, we obtain in fact a well-defined element gamma L, which is gonna be a QL conj class of GA. So just, this is just the image in conj GA of uh, uh, this Frobenius element under the image of the representation rho L GA. And this, this element is usually is what we're gonna call the conj class of L-adic Frobenius at V, okay? So now that we have this, uh, this factoring property, uh, a very natural question arises. So if we, uh, one way to actually interpret this independence of L of the characteristic polynomial of Frobenius is actually, this is saying, 
if you look at the image of this L addict Frobenius, this quantity class of L addict Frobenius, inside uh, the variety of quantity classes for GL of BQL, this quantity class is actually defined over the rationals and is independent of L. So somehow this just follows from the fact that semi-simple quantity classes in GLN are essentially determined by the characteristic polynomials. Okay. Um, so now that we actually have these quantity classes in this, this smaller group, this mumford tate group, you can ask the very natural question, which is whether this L independence actually holds in the mumford tate group in this, in this smaller group. And this is uh, the content of uh, our main theorem. So uh, if A is an abelian variety over a number field E, um, and we'll assume that we already made this uh, extension, this finite extension such that uh, this Gower representation factors through the mumford tate group, then um, for P bigger than two and V dividing P, a prime of good reduction for A, there actually exists um, a rational, uh, a Q rational quantity class gamma such that gamma is equal to gamma L for all L not equal to V. In other words, this is saying that the quantity class of L addict Frobenius is actually defined over the rational numbers and is independent of L. Okay. Um, so before I move on, let me just make a couple of remarks about this theorem. So the first remark is that, uh, so as I already mentioned, the Vey conjectures implies that this L independent statement actually holds inside this larger group, GLV. Um, but in general, the map between quantity classes in GA to quantity classes in GLV is not injected. So the result we prove is actually much stronger than the one you actually just get from the, from the Vey conjecture. The second remark is that uh, this theorem, you can think of it as really being related to a conjecture of Serre on L independence in motivic Gal groups. So Serre actually uh, has a conjecture which you can uh, make sense of for much more general algebraic varieties. But to actually formulate his conjecture, um, you need a good theory of motives, which uh, we don't have. Um, but in the case of abelian varieties, the mumford tate group, I guess, is like a reasonable substitute for the motivic Gal group. So one could think of this theorem as, I guess, a special case of this conjecture of, of Sarah. Okay. Um, and the final remark is that the obstruction in the case P equals two is uh, something that's related to the construction of integral models for Schumer varieties. And I think uh, we hope that uh, if once one figures out how to actually construct certain good integral models in the case P equals two, we, really, we hope our techniques will actually apply in that case too to to prove the theorem in for, for even the prime p equals two. Okay. Um, a quick so, question, wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so you mentioned earlier you can you, you can in general extend the field slightly so that the image lands inside the QL points of the Montford Tate group. Yes. Uh, and that ex that extension works for all L. Is that right? Yes. Yes, that's right. Yes. Okay. Independent. And, and, you, mm. and do you have a statement uh, that? Uh, says something without making that extension with some disconnected version of the group? Uh, we, 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 we don't have a statement in that case. Okay. Um, so are there any other questions before I move on? Okay. Um, so yeah, let me briefly uh, talk about some previous work. Um, so if A has CM, the result um, is classical. Um, this just follows from the Shimura Tanayama reciprocity law. Um, and I think about 10 years ago, Newt had this uh, very nice result where he proved this L independence inside uh, this variety conj prime GA. So this is some modified version of the variety conj GA. So it's in fact going to be the quotient of conj GA by the action of some finite group. Um, but he also had this additional uh, assumption that this element gamma L is it's called weakly neat. And then Kissin has also proves this result uh, when uh, the, the base change of GA to QP is unramified. In other words, it's quasi split and splits over an, unramif an unramified extension. Um, and this really follows from his proof of the Langlands Rapport conjecture. So, in fact, this sort of L independent statement is something that's sort of, sort of built into the Langlands, Langlands Rapport conjecture. Um, so our proof is quite different from all these previous works, although I guess it most closely resembles um, 
uh, Kissens proof. Uh, but we won't actually need to use anything really, really deep about Chimurva. It's like the Langlis Rathbord conjecture. Okay. Um, so now uh, I'm going to move on to talk about the, the idea of the proof. Um, so in fact, what we're going to do in the proof, we're not actually going to prove any cases of the theorem directly. So the idea of the proof is what we're going to do is we're going to reinterpret the problem in terms of Schmur varieties. And this will actually allow us to deduce uh, all cases of the theorem from previously known cases. So in fact, we're going to, we're going to deduce all cases of the theorem just from the CM case. Um, so in that sense, this, this proof is actually very reminiscent of the Lean's proof that all uh, Hodge cycles are absolutely Hodge. Okay. Um, so yeah, so now I'm going to move on to the second part of the talk, which is to give a reformulation of this main theorem in terms of Shimura varieties. Okay, so to do this, I need to introduce Shimura varieties. Okay, so I'll let uh, the pair GX be a Shimura datum. So in other words, G will be a reductive group over the rational numbers and X will be a GR conjugacy class of homomorphisms. Um, of the lean homomorphisms, so homomorphisms from this uh, so-called de lean torus into at uh, the base change of G to R. And I'll fix uh, K upper P, a compact open subgroup of G of the finite of delts with trivial component at a P, and K lower P, a parahoric subgroup uh, of GQB. So parahoric subgroup is just uh, a compact open subgroup, which is like the pre-image of a parabolic subgroup under some suitable mod p reduction map. Okay, so this is just some technical uh, assumption that, and we're actually only going to consider these sort of para parahoric level cases uh, in the rest of the talk. Um, and we'll also set k to be the product of these two compact opens, which is going to be a compact open in g of the finite of delts. Um, so I'll let, uh, so now associated to this data uh, is the is the Shimura variety, which is an algebraic variety over a number field E, um, which is usually called the reflex field. So these Shimura varieties in general, they can be uh, somewhat complicated objects, but um, in the cases that we're going to consider in this talk, they actually have a much more concrete description in terms of abelian varieties. So in fact, the point is, if you take A, a complex abelian variety of dimension D, you can attach to it a Schmura datum, uh, GAXA, where this GA is just a month of tape group. And this conjugacy class of homomorphisms is determined by the Hodge structure and the Betty cohomology. And then in this case, if you look at the complex points of this Schmura variety, this is just gonna be a complex manifold. And it turns out it's complex points just correspond to uh, abelian varieties A prime of dimension D such that um, GA, uh, this month take group of A prime, GA prime, is contained in GA. Okay, so I put this in quotation marks because it's not completely precise. You also need to introduce uh, things like the level structure and, and polarization. But the point is, um, if, at least on the level of complex points, this, this Shimura variety actually has a, a reasonable sort of moduli interpretation in terms of beginning varieties with this condition on its month of take group. Okay. Uh, so for example, if G is just GL2, then the Shimura varieties just correspond to the modular curve with a suitable level structure. And the point is, if you have a point uh, A, which is defined, uh, uh, sorry, if an abelian variety A defined over E, then A actually corresponds to some E point of this uh, Shimura variety, okay? Now to move on, uh, to proceed, I need to introduce integral models for these Shimura varieties. So I'll let B prime dividing uh, P be a place of the reflex field. And I'll let um, SKGX be what I'll call a good integral model for the Shimura variety over the ring of integers localized at this place B prime. Okay, so I won't define precisely what good means. Um, I guess recently Pappas is a preprint where he gives a way to actually characterize these integral models, but at least just for the purposes of this talk, um, I'll take this word good to mean the following. So later on, I'm gonna use certain properties of these integral models and like whatever properties I use, 
should be incorporated into this uh, notion of good. Okay, so um, this is kind of a cheat way of defining this. Um, so in fact, the, the existence of good integral models is in general like a, a non-trivial problem. Um, but actually using uh, ideas of Kirsten and Pappas, we actually show that in all the cases that we need, um, good integral models will actually exist, okay? Um, and then I'll, I'll let S denote the special fiber of this integral model over this residue, over its residue field, um, KV prime, which are fixed to be isomorphic to FQ. And then if you look at the mod V reduction of, uh, of this abelian variety A, this just corresponds to some uh, FQ to the N point or X, X bar A on the special fiber, where FQ to the N is just the residue field at V. Okay. Uh, so now, this, uh, this, this integral model, uh, and even its special fiber, satisfies the following property. So it turns out, for each L not equal to P, there exists a, a, a GQL local system, which I'll call LLS et al on S. And so the existence of this compatible system is something that should be incorporated into this definition of, of good integral model. Then if we assume S is normal, which is uh, which we can actually always arrange, uh, we'll see later on, we can actually always arrange this. And we'll fix, if we fix Y bar, um, a geometric point, then this local system just corresponds to a homomorphism of the etal fundamental group into G of QL. Um, and for a point X, uh, an FQ to the M point in the special fiber, we actually obtain uh, a well-defined conjugacy class, which I'll call gamma XL. So it's uh, going to be a QL conjugacy class of G. And this is just given, going to be given by the image of the local Frobenius at X um, under the composition, on, under this composition. So this composition is given by, first you take the isomorphism of pi 1 S X bar with pi 1 S Y bar. This is well-defined up to conjugation, which is why you only get a well-defined conjugacy class. And then you just compose it with this representation of the atoll fundamental group, and then you project to the uh, variety of quantity classes. And the following fact, which is not very surprising, is that uh, if this group G is actually equal to uh, a month, the month of take group of some beanie variety, and your point X uh, corresponds to the mod P reduction, of A, then this conjugacy class gamma XL is just equal to this, uh, the conjugacy class of L adic Frobenius in the Mumford take group that we defined on our previous slide. Okay. So then we can make the following definition. So we say that a point on the special fiber of the Schumer variety satisfies uh, the property L end or this L independence property if there exists a Q rational quantity class gamma, such that gamma equals gamma XL for all L not equal to P. Okay. Um, so then we can make the following conjecture, which is that for any N and uh, FQ to the N point on the special fiber, this point actually satisfies the property uh, LN. Okay. Um, and then it's clear just from the fact from the fact that I stated above that theorem one will just follow from conjecture one applied to uh, the Shimura variety corresponding to GAXA. Okay, so we sort of reduce the problem now to proving a certain property about points on the special fiber of uh, Shimura varieties. So it seems like we haven't really made much progress. We've just sort of reformulated the problem. But actually, it turns out this reformulation will be extremely useful. And the key point, and so the main reason why this reformulation is useful is because now these conjugacy classes, gamma XL, actually occurs as part of a family. So in other words, they, um, they're actually the, they correspond to the action of the, the fr local Frobenius acting in the stalks of some local system. Okay, so that's really the key point of why we want to re reformulate it in this way. Um, so we won't actually prove uh, conjecture one in complete, complete generality. 
We'll prove it in only a special case, which is sufficient to deduce the main theorem. Um, so uh, I'll now explain how we can actually reduce to this special case. So uh, I'll, I'll let f, if we let, uh, I'll let f uh, be a totally real, uh, be a totally real field. Then the Schmerer datum GX induces a Schmerer datum uh, where this induces another Schmerer datum where this reductive group is just given by the restriction of scalars from F down to Q of the base change of G to F. And this uh, X prime is induced by the conjugacy class of Deline homomorphisms given by X. Then uh, the diagonal map, um, there, there's a diagonal map from G into this larger group, this larger restriction scalars group, and this actually induces a map of integral models. Um, and it also induces uh, for any, any, um, ex any uh, field extension K of Q, an injection on conjugacy classes. Okay. And this actually gives the following reduction, reduction step, which is that um, conjecture one holds for, if conjecture one holds for this larger restriction scalars group, then it actually holds for uh, the smaller group GX. Okay, so the point is that um, this injection of conjugacy classes actually tells you that it suffices to prove L independence for this, uh, for this larger group. Okay, um, and the reason we use this reduct, we, we have this reduction step is now we can reduce to the case, we reduce to proving the, the conjecture, um, in uh, some more special cases where these Tremor varieties actually have some really nice properties. Okay, so now I can state our second Sorry. main theorem. Can I ask something? Yeah, sure. About your previous slide. Um, uh -huh. Is it easy to see why this map on conjugacy clauses is injective here? Yeah, you, you can sort of just like write it down. Yeah, literally. Um, is it? Okay. Um, so let me just, uh, so, so now I can introduce the, the, uh, the second main theorem, which we'll, uh, which we'll prove. Um, so uh, for this, I need to introduce some assumptions. Um, uh, and so the first assumption that, that I'll make is that P is bigger than two and GX is Hodge, what's called Hodge type. So in other words, there is, exists embedding of Shimura datum from GX into a, a Siegel Shimura datum. Um, so this, this condition is sort of very natural because um, all the Shimura datum associated to mother take groups will be of Hodge type. Okay, so now also introduce two sort of very uh, technical assumptions. So the first one is that uh, if you look at the base change to QP of the uh, adjoint group of G, then it's actually isomorphic to a product of restriction of scalars of split groups. And I'll also uh, assume that KP is what's called a very special parahoric subgroup of GQP. So I'm not going to say too much more about these, these assumptions, these, these last two assumptions. Um, I'll say more about them later on. So the point is that these last two assumptions will actually imply some very nice properties about the Shimura varieties. Okay, so under these assumptions, we actually construct uh, some good integral models for, for the Shimura variety. And in, in fact, we actually construct integral models in a much more general situation, um, but to sort of save, save time and not have to uh, make some more technical definitions, I'll just stick to these assumptions. Um, but note that in this case, in the case that we considered, these uh, uh, FIs may actually be wildly ramified. So the existence of integral models doesn't immediately follow from the work of Kisson and Pappus, which constructs these integral models under some tameless hypothesis. Um, but our construction of the integral models follows uh, using exactly the same idea as Kisson and Pappus. Okay. So our second main theorem is the following. So it says that under these assumptions dagger, conjecture one is true. Um, in other words, that every point on the special fiber of the Shimura variety actually satisfies this L independence property. Okay. 
And then if we apply uh, the second main theorem to the Shimura variety corresponding to this restrictive scalars group, and then use for some suitably uh, chosen totally real field, this is actually implies uh, theorem one using the reversion step. So here we essentially choose this totally real, real, totally real field to approximate a splitting field uh, for the base change of G to QP. Okay. So, uh, okay, so this is uh, the, this is our second main theorem. So in the rest of the talk, I'm going to sort of explain the idea of the proof of theorem two. Okay, any, any questions about, about this, this theorem? Okay. Great. Okay, so now I'll talk about the idea of proof of, the, of theorem two. Um, so first of all, note that we can assume that G is not a torus uh, because this is just the CM case and it's already taken care of by work of uh, Shimura and Tanayama. So to prove theorem two, um, we use three main ingredients. So the first ingredient is, um, so recall, we're trying to show that every uh, single point on the special fiber of the Shimura variety satisfies the property LN. So as a first step, we show that there exists an open dense set of points in S, which actually satisfies this property LN. And this is done by using the theory of CM lifts or so-called special liftings. And then um, we're gonna use the, uh, what we proved in the first part and the existence of compatible local systems to actually deduce the L, inde L independence property for, for all points. So this, this, is the, this is the second part of the argument is really the key part where we actually use the fact that these constancy classes occur in some kind of family, okay? But to actually apply the argument using compatible local systems, we need to actually construct some explicit smooth curves on the special fiber of this Shimura variety. This is because uh, the existence of compatible local systems is actually not known in complete generality, um, but it is known for the case of smooth curves. And this is just follows from uh, the work of Lafourg. Um, so in order to actually apply the argument uh, using compatible local systems, we actually have to construct uh, some explicit curves on the Shimura variety, okay? So uh, in the rest of the talk, I want to sort of go through- um, Which Lafourg is this? Uh, Lauren Lafourg, the, uh, sorry. Yeah, the I original. I a, a, a thesis of a student of Nick Katz, I can't remember his name, about uh, independence of monodromy using Lafourg's work. Do you know this? T.Y. Chin. Yeah, oh yeah, that's it. How was in his thesis defense? Uh, is there any relation in this work? The way he's using? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with that work. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe someone else knows. Uh, okay, well. Yeah. I, I think there's at I, least, I think there's at least some thematic similarity. Okay. The caps is involved. <laughs> and sorry, so compatible local systems, does that mean in the, in the sense of companions or what? In yeah, what yeah. Yes, yeah, companions. And, and then the point is that of in higher dimension, we only know it for, for GLN or something? In higher, sorry, no, I mean, it's, it's known for smooth schemes as well. Oh, for smooth, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this work of Drumfeld, yep. Um, but yeah, the Tremor varieties we work with won't be smooth in general. Okay, so yeah, so let me, so in the rest of the talk, I'll, oh, wait, sorry, are there, are there any more questions? Okay, so in the rest of the talk, um, I'll go through each of these, I'll, I wanna go through uh, each of these in, ingredients in a little bit more detail because I think each of them are sort of interesting in their own right. Okay, so I wanna start off by, uh, uh, looking uh, by explaining the, the the first part which is the existence of an open dense set of points satisfying this l end property so to do this i need to introduce uh, special points so i'll let uh, t be a torus of g uh, and i'll assume this torus satisfies the property that there exists some ht uh, in x which actually factors through the torus 
Um, then this associated with this torus and this HG is uh, another Shimura variety, but this time for this torus. And in this case, it's just going to be a finite set of points. And we say a point in the Shimura variety is actually a special point if there exists some t in G as above, um, such that uh, the point X lies in the image of uh, this uh, Shimura variety for the torus under some suitable pseudonymal map of Shimura varieties. Okay. So in terms of the interpretation of the Shimura variety in terms of abelian varieties, special points just correspond to CM abelian varieties. Um, so now, if we suppose that uh, a point, uh, uh, a point X, uh, an FQ to the M point of the special fiber of the Shimura variety actually admits a lift to some special point X tilde on the generic fiber, then this X tilde actually corresponds to some CM abelian variety AX tilde. Um, and then this, uh, this gamma XL, so this, this conjugacy class of Frobenius, just corresponds to the Frobenius endomorphism of uh, AX tilde mod P. But since we know that AX tilde actually has CM, this, uh, this Frobenius actually lists to, to AX tilde. Okay, so then if you consider the action of this lift of Frobenius on the Betty cohomology of the CM lift, you actually obtain uh, an, uh, an element gamma tilde in T of Q and hence in G of Q, such that if you look at the image of this element in uh, the variety of quantity classes, this is going to give you a Q rational quantity class, which is actually equal to um, gamma XL uh, for all L not equal to P. Okay, so the other shot is of this is that um, if you know a point in the special fiber actually admits a special lifting, sorry, then it actually satisfies uh, the property L int. Okay, um, so this, this sort of idea using, of using CM liftings to prove these kind of theorems, it's, it's not new and it has a very long history. And I guess it probably origi originates in the original work of Honda and Tate. Um, so if one tried to proceed and sort of uh, naively try to show that every single point on the special fiber of a Shimura variety admits a CM lift, because that would obviously imply um, theorem two, then you can actually run into some troubles. Uh, and I think Franz Ort even has some counterexamples to the existence of uh, CM lifting. So there, there, there do actually exist certain points which don't uh, admit special liftings. Okay, uh, so just sort of the naive strategy of proving every, every single point has a special lifting won't, won't work. But as a first step, we actually managed to show that at least there exists a, an open dense set of X, which do admit special liftings. So to explain this, I need to introduce the so-called new ordinary locus on the Shimura variety. So it turns out, again, as part of this definition of good integral model, there exists a map from the special fiber of the Shimura variety into uh, the set BG mu. Okay, so this, Set BG mu is just a set of uh, GQP isocrystals satisfying a group theoretic analog of Mazur's inequality. So if G, uh, for example, if G is just equal to GLN, then this, this mu, which actually corresponds to the, the Hodge curve character, actually determines a, um, a Hodge polygon. And then this set is literally just a set of isomorphism classes of isocrystals whose Newton polygons lie below this Hodge polygon and have the same endpoint. So in that case, it's literally just Mazur's inequality. And for example, in the case of the modular curve, so when G equals GL2, this map delta just sends an elliptic curve to the isomorphism class of its underlying uh, isocrystal. So then the point is that this delta induces uh, a stratification in the special fiber of the Shimura variety. Um, essentially, the strata are just going to be in, given by the pre-images of the elements in BG mu. And so the stratification is just indexed by BG mu. Uh, so this BG mu, it's also known that this BG mu is equipped with a partial order less than or equal to. 
And so the next part is really the key point where we actually use these assumptions dagger. Okay, so it turns out under these assumptions dagger that we made earlier, this BG mu actually contains a maximal element called B ord. Um, and we'll define uh, S ord to be the, the strata corresponding to, to this B ord. And it's also known that under these assumptions dagger, the stratum is open and dense in S. Okay. And this, this stratum S ord is usually, usually called the mu ordinary locus. And this is just the group gener theoretic generalization of the ordinary locus in the case of uh, modular curves. Okay. So uh, what we prove, uh, so our third theorem is that under the assumptions dagger, any point in the mu ordinary locus actually admits a lift to a special point x tilde. And so this uh, AX tilde, so this, the special point corresponds to some uh, CM abelian variety, then the CM abelian variety is, is now just the group theoretic analog of the Sertate canonical lift for ordinary abelian varieties. Okay. And this sort of uh, phenomenon has really been studied in previous work of, uh, so originally studied by Sertate, and then in the case of uh, Shimura varieties by Moonin and Shankar and myself. So given these previous works, this, this theorem, I guess, is not too surprising, I guess. Um, but really the upshot of this theorem is that now we can show that all points in this muon locus actually satisfies this L independence property. Okay, so now we do have an open and dense set of points in the special fiber of the Shimura variety satisfying L in. Okay, so now um, I'm going to move on to the second part of the argument. So uh, in this part of the argument, we're going to use compatible local systems to deduce the property L end for all uh, points in the special fiber. And I think this is really, maybe in my opinion, the, the most interesting uh, part of the argument. So to explain this, I, I need to introduce, well, recall the theory of compatible or I guess if you want companion local systems. Um, so I'll let X be a normal finite type scheme over a finite field, FQ. And I'll let L and L prime not equal to P uh, be primes. And I'll let uh, LL and KL prime be a least QL bar sheaf and uh, a QL prime bar sheaf over, over X. Then LL and KL prime are said to be compatible if there exists a number field E and embeddings the number field into QL bar and QL prime bar such that for all X uh, in uh, for, for, for all X and uh, FQ to the point FQ to the end point of X, the characteristic polynomial of Frobenius acting on the stalks of these two local systems are actually uh, actually have coefficients in E and are actually equal. Um, so, a priori, these two uh, uh, these two characteristic polynomials actually have coefficients in, in different fields, uh, QL and uh, QL prime, or QL, QL bar and QL prime bar, and they're compatible if they actually define over some finite extension of Q, and uh, they're actually equal. So then there's this conjecture due to Dedlin, which is that for any uh, <coughs> least QL bar sheaf on a normal finite type scheme, finite type scheme, uh, this, this, this least sheaf actually admits um, a, a, a QL prime bar sheaf KL prime, which is compatible with it. Or in other words, it admits a, a, a least QL prime bar companion. Okay. So if we, if we now actually assume Deline's conjecture, then we can actually prove theorem two. So the argument for this goes as follows. So recall that we actually have a GQL local system, LL on S. And it also happens that under the assumptions dagger, this uh, scheme uh, this scheme S is, is normal. Um, so now I'll, I'll let R be any representation of G. 
into, uh, into GLN. Then we can consider the composition of uh, R with this uh, representation of fundamental groups corresponding to this local system. And this uh, gives rise to a least QR bar sheath LL on S. Okay, so now if we assume the Leeds conjecture, we can produce two least QR prime bar sheets uh, on S, which I'll call KL prime and LL prime. So this KL prime is just the, uh, the one coming from the Leeds conjecture. So by definition, it's just the least QR Kiel prime bar sheaf, which is compatible with LL. And this LL prime is just given to you from the Shimura variety. So this GQL local system on the Shimura variety, th there exists one for all L, so you just take L equals L prime. Okay, and then um, you get a GQL prime local system. And again, if you just take the composition of the representation of the tall fundamental groups with this representation R, you get uh, a least uh, Kiel prime bar sheaf. LL prime. But now um, our theorem three, um, the existence of uh, canonical liftings on the mu ring locus tells us the following. So it tells us that for every single point at X uh, on the mu ring locus, the characteristic polynomial of Frobenius acting on the stalk of KL prime is actually equal to the characteristic polynomial of Frobenius acting on LL prime. Okay, so the first equality in this equation just follows from the definition of compatible local system. And the second equality follows from uh, the property L in for the point, for the point X, right? So L in tells you that the Conti class uh, of Frobenius is independent of L inside G, and hence the Conti class will be independent if you compose it with this representation. And that just implies that the, these, um, these characteristic polynomials are actually equal. But now we can apply the Chebotar density theorem. So this is really the key part where we're using that these constant classes occur in some family. So the Chebotar density theorem for function fields tells you that uh, the characteristic polynomial of, um, uh, sorry, gives you, gives you this, this equality. So it tells you that the characteristic polynomial of uh, Frobenius acting on the stalk of LL is equal to the characteristic polynomial of Frobenius acting on LL prime for all X in the special value of the Shimura variety. So again, the first equality just follows from the definition of compatible local system. And the second one follows from the, uh, uh, follows from the Chebotar of density theorem. Okay. So yeah, so this is the key point where we use the fact that these constant classes occur in a, in a family this, this really allows us to essentially deduce information about Conzi class at all points just from the knowledge at a dense open set of points, okay? And since we actually know that this is true for every single representation R, this actually implies that these, the, the Conzi class gamma XL is actually equal to the Conzi class gamma XL prime. Um, so in fact, these quantity classes will be defined over uh, Q bar, the algebraic closure, closure of Q. And, and it turns out uh, this, this argument using compatible local systems tells you they're actually equal for all points. But now you can apply the Chebotar of density theorem again, but this time the number field version. And this actually tells you that these, uh, these um, quantity classes, which are this, this quantity class, which is actually defined a priori defined over Q bar is actually defined over Q. So we get a, a rational Q rational quantity class gamma such that gamma equals gamma XL for all L non equal to P. Or in other words, that X satisfies the property L in. Okay. So follows from this that, you know, if you actually know Deline's conjecture, then we can prove uh, uh, our theorem too. But actually there's a problem, which is that Deline's conjecture is only known for smooth schemes. Okay. Um, and so the case of smooth curves is obviously due to uh, Laurent Lefort. Um, so this follows from his construction of the Langlands correspondence for GLN over function fields. And then using a very uh, clever reduction to the case of curves argument, Drimfeld actually proved this conjecture or the Lean's conjecture for, for all smooth schemes. 
But in general, the Shimura values we work with uh, won't be smooth. So uh, we can't apply the Lean's conjecture directly. To, to apply it, we actually need to, again, do a, a, a reduction to the case of curves argument. So if we need to actually construct some explicit curves in the special fiber of Shimura values. So this is what I'll explain now. So if I let x be a point, uh, an fq to the n point of the Shimura variety, so the, the kind of result uh, that we actually want is the following. So suppose there exists uh, some smooth curve c over fq to the n and uh, a map phi from c into s base change to fq to the n defined over fq to the n, satisfying the following two properties. So first of all, we assume that um, x lies in the image of some fq to the n rational point in C. And, and we also assume that uh, the image of C uh, intersects the, uh, the mu ordinary locus. Okay. Um, so if you, um, if, you have a, if you have a map like this, then you can sort of pull back the situation to this smooth curve. And then you can apply the argument using compatible local systems. And this will actually uh, imply that this point X satisfies the property L in. Um, and it turns out if you replace FQ to the N by its algebraic closure, the existence of a map of this form actually just follows from Bettini's theorem. Okay. Um, but, uh, and this is the key point, you actually can't make you're actually not allowed to make a finite extension. Um, so if you actually, if you, made a, if you made a finite extension and try to run this argument, you only get independence of L for some power of the Frobenius, which is not what we want. We actually want Frobenius on the nodes. Okay, so we can't, we can't use anything like Bettini's theorem. Um, and in fact, Drimfeld has actually shown that there are certain normal and cohen macaulay schemes um, over uh, finite fields such that there exists uh, an FQ to the N rational point such that no, there doesn't exist uh, a non-constant map from a smooth curve which satisfies uh, property one. So basically there exists um, normal and cohen macaulay schemes together with uh, an FQ to the N rational point such that this rational point won't lie in the image of an FQ to the N rational point on some smooth curve under a non-constant map, okay? And so you really can't hope to prove um, this, the existence of these, these curves by sort of abstract means. Um, so to, to actually construct these curves, we're gonna need to use something special about the geometry of these Shimura varieties. So what we actually prove is, so we, we, we won't actually prove um, the statement on the nodes, we're, we're going to prove a slightly, very, a slightly weaker statement of this, of this, um, slightly weaker statement, which is already enough to deduce theorem two. Okay, so in order to explain this, I need to introduce so-called Kotwitz Rapport stratification. So uh, we already introduced the Newton stratification on this uh, Shimura, on the special fiber of the Shimura variety. So it turns out the Shimura variety is actually also equipped with another stratification called the KR or Kotwitz Rapport stratification. Um, and the stratification, it's indexed by a subset of the dominant co weights of G. Okay, so this is not, I guess, completely precise, but it's, uh, it's how you want to think about the index indexing set of this, uh, of this stratification. Um, and the stratification is something that you don't, you won't actually see when the Shimura variety is, has good reduction. When the, or when the Shimura variety is smooth. It, you actually only, it actually only comes up when the Shimura variety has a uh, bad reduction. And somehow the point is that this stratification actually somehow controls the singularities of these integral models for Shimura variety. So uh, it turns out if you have two points on the special fiber of the Shimura variety, um, then if they lie in the same strata, then the atal local structure about these two points of the integral model are actually gonna be the, the same. Um, so I'll write S lambda for the strata corresponding to some dominant co-weight lambda. 
then the closure relations on the stratification are just, is just given by some partial order on the dominant co-weights. And uh, turns out there exists uh, a maximal stratum, S mu. Uh, again, for this, we need to assume uh, these assumptions dagger, uh, which is open and dense. And, and it turns out this maximal stratum actually also coincides with the smooth locus of the, the, the special fiber. So the proposition that we prove in this case is the following. So we show that if X is a point, uh, a FQ to the N rational point lying on some uh, strata lambda, which is smaller than the maximal stratum, then there actually exists a smooth curve over FQ to the N and a map from the smooth curve into the Shimura variety satisfying the following two properties. So again, we have that, um, X, the first property is that X lies in the image of an FQ to N rational point of this curve. And secondly, that the image of this curve actually intersects some larger stratum. So there exists some lambda prime strictly bigger than lambda such that phi C intersects the strata S lambda prime. Okay. So the way we actually construct these curves um, uh, is the following. So we use the fact that the existence of this phi is um, in some sense a local property. Um, so it actually suffices to prove uh, the existence of these curves for the so-called local model, okay? So this, this, this local model um, is a, a much simpler scheme, um, which can be defined using group theory. And the point is that it, it's gonna model the, the sort of the et al local structure of the Shimura variety. Um, and this, this corporate rapport stratification is induced by a, an analogous stratification on the local model, okay? So it actually suffices to prove uh, the existence of these curves for this local model. But then it turns out the special fiber of this local model actually embeds into some affine Grassmannian. Um, and then you can just uh, sort of construct these curves completely explicitly using group theory. Um, so in fact, we use something like uh, these so-called unipotent curves to construct um, these curves in the local model. And then um, you can actually use the local model diagram to actually pull these curves uh, back to the Shimura variety. Okay. And now that we have this proposition, we can use a descending induction argument uh, to prove uh, this property L in for all points uh, in S. Okay. So the argument goes as follows. So first of all, recall that using the existence of special liftings on the mu and relocus, we have the property L end for all points in the mu and relocus. Now, uh, then the next step is we use the fact that uh, we know the existence of compatible local systems for smooth schemes. And then we, we can run this, uh, this argument using compatible local systems apply to the just a smooth locus uh, on, the, on the special fiber. So then we get the property LN for all points in the smooth locus of, uh, of S, or in other words, this maximal stratum S mu, okay? Um, and then in general, if you take a point X lying in some smaller stratum S lambda, you can assume by induction that for all points lying in some bigger stratum, um, this L, L independence property is actually known uh, for, for points in a, in a bigger stratum. And then use this proposition to, to provide you with a, with a curve, uh, which actually maps to, which actually inter intersects some, some larger stratum. And then you can pull back uh, the situation of the curve, again, run the compatible local systems argument, and this gives you the property L in for the point X. And then if you apply this to all points in the stratum S lambda, you get L in for all points in the stratum S lambda, okay? And then you basically just sort of go down all the stratum and then eventually this fills out uh, the whole of the special fiber, okay? So that, that uh, gives you the proof of theorem two and hence the, the proof of the main theorem on L independence. Um, so I think uh, that's a good place to stop. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for, for listening. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments?
Could you uh, explain, or at least display again, the condition dagger, which seems yeah. important? Sure. Um, went very okay. quick. Yeah, so it's these last two conditions which really play a role in uh, mean these Shimura varieties actually satisfy some good properties. So um, the, the second assumption that, uh, that there's an isomorphism between the, this adjoint group and like a, pro a product restriction scale as a split group, so this actually uh, implies that the muonary locus uh, is, is dense. Uh, sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. It actually implies that actually exists a muonary locus. In fact, in general, there won't actually exist such a thing as the muonary locus. Um, and in fact, a muonary, the muonary locus will only exist when the group of P is quasi split. Okay, so that's where the, this first assumption comes in. And the second assumption tells you now that the muonary locus is going to be dense. Okay. So I'm just trying to understand is this restricting? Does it mean the theorem is restricted under some conditions and how severe are those conditions, or is this just a tool to get there? I'm a bit confused. Um, so I, I think um, maybe theorem, the main theorem, how, how does this filter back into the main theorem? Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So in fact, this is, um, we use, basically use the reduction step. Okay, so it, it, in order to prove the main theorem, it actually suffices to just prove um, theorem two under these assumptions. Ah, okay. All right. So, okay. so it's just because we, we can apply we can apply this reduction step to this like restriction of scalars, uh, Shimura datum, um, where where we choose this f to just approximate a splitting field. Ah, right. You at, at p. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm I'm quite happy. Yeah. Very good. Uh, so I think we, we, we some can of actually... this seems quite general. Sorry. Some of this seems quite general. I mean, can you deal with more gen other thing other kind of? Yeah. I th I think um, we can probably we should be able to do um, well cases when the group is quasi split and very uh, with very special special power Harakawa structure. Is and, and under these two assumptions, the 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 muonary locus is going to be dense, and we can sort of run the same same kind of argument. Which part did you mean was general, Peter? Oh, can't you? I have to learn how to unmute myself because yeah. I do talk a lot, <laughs> or I do try to participate. Uh, I'm trying to understand just this L independence. Uh, oh, right. Uh, in other words, it seems like automorphic forms are used, or Shimura varieties here, uh, rather ingeniously to make a family and prove L independence. And I'm just trying to understand that philosophy a little more generally. Well, the thing is, in general, here at least you have Deline's theorem, right. so that at least the statement of the conjecture makes sense. <laughs> I think, I think in general you don't even have that. No, oh, so that's right. Anyway, it's a very beautiful argument. Yeah. I, ha I had a question about the Bertini theorems. Mm -hmm. uh, because normally when you're over a finite field, you can replace the usual ones by the Poonen Bertini theorem. So why, yeah, that's why just, does that work? So that, that's just for smooth schemes, though. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I also wanted to ask about that. What, what, so is the reason why uh, you can't use the punem Bertini theorem because you don't have something smooth? Yeah. Is that precisely? Yeah, okay. that's, that's exactly why, yeah. Okay, okay, thanks, yeah, I also wanted to. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, I had a question about uh, Deline's theorem. I was just sure. wondering if it is um, constructive that it actually tells you finite extension uh, is of E. Does it tell you what it is? Um, I 
that, that I'm not so sure. I don't think so, but um, Mark, do, do you know? I, th I don't think it does. Um, it's not adjoining with the two torsion points, or, or uh, in case, is it a billion? Is it no? I have the feeling like if you give the levels, if you give the billion variety enough level structure, mm -hmm. like to kill the automorphisms, then that should be good enough, I think. Because basically, if if your abelian variety does correspond to a point on, on the Schumer variety, mm -hmm. then the field of definition of the point is, is already good enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I th think so. So then I think it should be something like, like just you have to kill the automorphisms. I mean, the abelian okay. Um, at, at least that should be approximately correct. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Any other questions? Uh, can I can I ask another question? Yeah, sure. So. Okay, maybe this is a stupid question, but is it so? You you're starting with parahoric uh, level structure. Is it or is this result already known for hyperspecial or something, or you're just recovering the hyperspecial result? Uh, which result are you talking about? Like whatever it is you're trying to prove, you're doing parahoric, right? So you're um, parahoric integral. Yeah. Do you mean the statement about Shimura varieties? Yeah, like uh, probably L end. Is there is there like some? Uh, yeah, that's yeah, Mark already, Mark already did that. Oh, okay. So, so technically speaking, if you just take uh, hyperspecial integral models, you do have right. smooth integral models, and th there you don't have to do all these complicated things because uh, uh, you can just use Bertini's theorem. Uh, uh, which yeah. So, I mean, Mark uh, proved this in the course of proving Langlands Rapport. So it's like a different uh, technique, but. Yeah, oh, it has also, nothing to do with these smooth curves. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Like, so his argument doesn't have anything to do with these these curves. But if you wanted to run our argument, then uh -huh. yeah, it would be much simpler. Yeah, you could just use. Well, in fact, you wouldn't even use 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 Bertini. You could just use Trimfeld's theorem. The existence of a compatible local system for for smooth schemes. Okay. Okay. So your argument, a much simplified version, recovers what Mark proved. Yeah, in the hyperspecial. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, I guess yeah. It, it's a different. It's a different proof, and yeah, it doesn't use anything very, very, like too deep, like Langlands Rapport conjecture. That's right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? If not, then let's thank Ron again. Thanks for having me. When are we going to Blue Point? Yeah, what, are the, I think what are the conventions for clapping on Zoom? Huh? What are the conventions for clapping on Zoom? We're making them. <laughs> At least I'm as an organizer, I'm trying before. to clap hard so that everyone can hear my clapping. <laughs> Somehow, like whenever I'm on a Zoom call and people like, let's thank the speaker, it's a very weak effort. You know, it sounds <laughs> like very... Uh, we... Uh, I think uh, if everybody unmutes, it can be quite impressive. Yeah, I think right now, this is the last scheduled talk. So let's thank the speaker again. <laughs> so that... We do finish here, we finish on a high. So we should thank the organizers too for keeping this going. Thanks. Oh, thanks. <laughs>